Hello, and welcome back to the Ashlar Vellum 3D Modeling User Interface Series. In this three-part series of videos, we're doing a quick introduction to the key features that give Cobalt, Xenon, and Argon what we call Vellumness, that easy and intuitive way of working with the software. In this video, we're going to talk about using the trackball to rotate the view of the model in the drawing area, showing it from different angles. This allows you to see parts of the model that may be behind or blocked by other parts. You'll remember from part one that the bottom of the trackball window shows us our current view. In this case, we're looking at the top view of the model. Click in that area and a list of other views drops down. Select any of them to become the current view. Click on the view called Trimetric. Notice how the lines in the blue circular area change with it. These lines represent the X, Y, and Z axes of the drawing area. Using this drop-down list lets you quickly look at the model from different views. This round blue object rotates the view by simply clicking and dragging it around until the view is set the way you want. When clicking and dragging within the ball itself, the lines that represent the axes move with the mouse as it is dragged. At the desired view, let go of the mouse button and the view is set. The trackball shows Dyn view. This is the dynamic view, which is basically any view that is not a preset view by the program or saved by the user. Let's create an object and move it using the trackball. From the trackball's menu, select the trimetric view. The axes are in the middle of the drawing area. Let's create a block by selecting the Block Primitive tool from the Solids palette on the left side of the screen. At the top of the screen in the message line, it says Block Primitive, Enter Start Diagonal Point, Shift equals Square. This shows the tool being used and prompts on how to create the block by selecting the starting point. We won't worry about the last part of the message right now as it is an advanced option. To enter the starting point, move the pointer to the origin of the drawing area where the X, Y, and Z axes meet at 0, 0, 0. You'll notice when you get close to the origin, the word pops up on the screen. This is the drafting assistant at work which we talked about in part one. For now, when the word origin is displayed, click the mouse and the point is placed right there. The message line says, Enter end diagonal point. Place the point appropriately. Now the message line prompts you to define height. To do this, bring the mouse up a little bit to be able to see how the block will look. At the right height, click the mouse and the block is complete. Now click inside the trackball and drag the cursor around to rotate the view to different angles. To set it back to the trimetric view, select trimetric from the list at the bottom of the trackball window. Note that the trackball does not actually rotate the block. It only rotates the view of the block. The block is still in the place it was created. Next we're going to look at some of the advanced features of the trackball to help customize our view. We can define the point around which the view of our model rotates. In the block we made before, notice that the view rotates around the center of the block. We're going to change this so that it rotates around the origin of the drawing or the coordinate 0, 0, 0. To begin, we'll set the view back to trimetric. Next, click the small circle with the arrow located in the upper left corner of the trackball window. This opens the View Rotation Options screen. The view is set to Sphere Mode, which uses the blue trackball to rotate. The type is set to Model, which defines the axis that the view rotates around. The important thing here is the origin. Here it is set to Object Center, which means that the object rotates around the center of the object in the drawing area. The view can also be rotated around a chosen point for example, the origin. To do this, change the type to Model Point and either click on the origin on the screen or simply type 000 in the X, Y, and Z fields. Then click OK. Now when the trackball is moved, 
notice that it is rotating around the origin instead of the center of the block. There is another icon in the upper right of the trackball window. This icon toggles the trackball from sphere mode to step mode. Notice the step icon in the center. In step mode, clicking on any of the arrows moves the model in increments as it rotates around its point of rotation. Click the center icon and change it to continuous rotation. Now when the arrows are clicked, the model spins in that direction. Click in the drawing area to make it stop. Step mode offers controls similar to the sphere mode. Click again on the arrow in the upper left to open the View Rotation Options window in Step Mode. Notice that this dialog offers screen type and step angle options. The step angle defines the number of degrees the view rotates when one of the arrows is clicked. When spinning in continuous rotation, the smaller the step angle, the smoother the view will rotate. The Type option defines the axis around which the model rotates. When set to screen, the view uses the axis of the screen around which to rotate the model. Selecting the right or left arrows rotates the geometry around the x-axis. That's the red line in the triad. The up or down arrows rotate the view around the screen's y-axis. That's the blue line. Clicking any of the four corner arrows rotates the model in that direction around the screen's z-axis, or the green line. By changing the mode of the model, the trackball uses the axis of the model to determine the direction to move when the arrows are selected. The origin option works just like it did in sphere mode. The best way to learn how the trackball works is to play with the settings and see how they affect the rotation on the screen. Thanks for watching this video on the trackball. One of the key features of the 3D modeling interface of Ashby Vellum's Cobalt, Xenon, and Argon. Be sure to see the Show Hide palette and the Design Explorer in Part 3 of this series.